God bless you. Seek things eternal and unseen. This is Larry Trammell. Shalom. Glory to God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I hate religion. I love Jesus. Religion hates Jesus. But that's all right. Because he's already stomped it in the head. The devil is religious, but Jesus ain't. So, Jesus is a free dude. Mm -hmm. oh! He was so free. I got it. He was so free. I mean, you got to realize this guy. At a time when being holy meant outward observance of Torah, he ate with unwashed hands as his disciples. He fellowship with low life scum, as far as the religious people were concerned. He came and began teaching without being certified. Didn't go to one of their schools. Just started talking. He healed people on the Sabbath that they strictly forbid because they considered it work. I mean, Jesus was what, we, what some people call radical. So what, what I found out, like sometimes people say that about me. Or they say wild man. Or, I don't know where I get that moniker. I really don't because I don't try to be. And when I look at the, some of the people that say it, and, the, and I know them well enough that they even know that they mean it as a compliment. They'll tell me that. I thought, I'm not really that wild. I mean, it's just different than what they're used to. And if you're, re different, if you're used to this regimented religious system, and then somebody comes along, whether it's me or anybody else, and, and then doesn't fit it, the typical thing is to think, that's strange. It's weird to me, though. I'm sorry. Thank you, brother. Thank you. No problem. It's weird to me, though, that... Uh, the scripture warns about what are those who call darkness light and light darkness. And I just want to, not that we're talking about ex absolute light and darkness right now, but if you want to be liturgical and you want to add to, you know, like every time you go to a steeple house, you've got to wear a tie. And every time, and that's fine. But when you make it part and parcel with the kingdom and then somebody comes along that doesn't do something like that and you tend to want to say, well, they're weird. No, maybe you need to reexamine what is weird. Jesus was normal. The system that he stepped into and shook to hell was weird. And I just want to encourage y'all, stay God's free people. You can walk in and out amongst people in bondages and in religious systems and you love them with all your heart and you don't judge them. But stay free. Like one brother, man of God I knew, or still know, he said, uh, go in among them, love them, fellowship with them, prophesy, be who you are, but don't put on their, their bondage. He says, ecclesiastical Babylon is like the vulture. It flies high, but it always looks for corruption to feed upon. And as long as we can look good and know how to spit out the right little scriptural phrases, forget this. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know why this is on my heart. It's just, it's just there. She said, burning in my bones. This is what burns in my bones. I am angry to see the bride raped. I am angry to see people take advantage of the bride of Christ for whom I was born to help prepare. For him. Not for me. Not for Rafa or Larry. And I know Larry's hard enough. He wouldn't have me here if he didn't believe this. His heart is to see the bride prepared for Christ too. And when we establish a system and make the bride of Christ try to fit into it, it's like a bridegroom having groomsmen who pinch the hiney of the bride before she goes down the aisle. Can you imagine that? What would you think, Larry, if on the, at your wedding day some of your guys were out flirt, flirting with your chick? You wouldn't like it, would you? Your chick, excuse me. Some ladies don't like it. With your lady. <clears throat> or Chris. What are people doing out to Debbie in the back? You found out some of your... There you go. Well, that's what Jesus is about to do. He's about to go back behind the house and whoop some booty. Because it angers him to see people abuse his beloved. And he says, at one time I was silent. You thought I was altogether like you. But now I will rouse myself. Like a bear robbed of its, of its cubs. He's going to bring down the systems of men. But I want to tell you something. 
A lot of people think that when God begins to pour out His Spirit, as He's doing in this hour, that religion and all is just going to kind of take a, a back seat, you know, that, it, it, that people are going to get out of it. Not true. Religion is going to have its ugly head raised all the way to the time when Jesus has to stomp on it and, get, and rid it. Because I'm telling you right now, if Jesus Christ Himself appeared and said, follow me, there would be many people that would still meet in steeple houses or creations of their own imagination and talk about Jesus but reject Him if He walked among them. We've read it. It's one of my favorite verses. John 5, 39, 40. You search the Scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Even the Scriptures. The Bible says that He's exalted His Word above His name. Isn't that right? He's exalted His Word above His name. And I love good Bible teaching. If you look at my Bibles, they, most of them are falling apart. But I'll be the first to say, and I, I know this is some of it's reiterating, especially for Lily. I know you've heard this a number of times. But I got to say it. I got to, I got to, got to say it. That this is no substitute for the one who wrote it. John 5, 39, 40, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. That's what they do. That's their purpose. That's their value. I know it says too that the man of God might be thoroughly equipped and prepared for every good work. But it's ultimately how are we thoroughly equipped? Because we're drawn to him. He says these things testify of me, but you would not come to me that you might have life. So life is not found in the Scriptures. Life is not found in Rapha. Life is not found at Larry's house on Friday night. Life is not found in speaking in tongues. Life is not found in any of these wonderful things that God has given us. Life is found in one place, capital P, and His name is Jesus. Now Jesus uses things. He'll utilize me standing here tonight if I would just get out of the way enough. He'll use books and Bibles and Rapha and my house and other things and one another. But we always have to keep focused on the fact that the source of life is always the person of the Son of God. And never get away from that. Jealously guard that with all your heart. Never be encumbered with the thing. Let me tell you, you can lose sight of God in His own house. When you step into the corridor, you come into it and when you're born again, as it were, and you step into the house of God, the kingdom of God, and all of a sudden you get so enamored with the accruements and the... Uh, and the stuff on the wall and the, and the people that are there that all of a sudden you forget why you're there. You know, I heard that that happened. You know, the, what's the, uh, the big thing, uh, one of the wonders of the world, Taj Mahal? Did you know that the king that built that built it for one of his wives and they started building it around her coffin and when they got through building it, they couldn't find the coffin. There was so much there that they loved her. The whole purpose of the thing. Isn't that an interesting story? That dog will hunt. <laughs> so God will even call you to do things. Can I have some water? Is this my water? God will even call you, to do, call you to do things. And you can get involved in doing what God has called you to do and miss God. So that for people that really hunger after God, I think all of you would qualify. Let me tell you what your, big, your struggles. Now you might be hit real hard. If a chick came up and really hit up hard on you or some dude or offered you cocaine and you had struggles with it before, you might could struggle, but most of you probably could turn away pretty easily from blatant things. What's going to be a lot of snare for you are things that look good, but they're not God. They look good, but they're not God. The things of God that take the place of God. Where you, get, where you settle for the things of God and miss the God of the things. Where you settle for the blessings of God and miss the God of the blessings. Where you settle for the Word of God and miss the God of the Word. That's what I love about John 5, 39, 40. I'm so glad Jesus said it because I'd want to say it, but people get real mad at me. But now I can say, well, Jesus said it, and they go, they still get mad, but they can't get as mad because Jesus said it. Can't say as much That's right. They just, they start to, they have to pull out the new reversed version. <laughs> get rid of that verse. Thank you, Jesus. Living God in heaven, we pray that by your Spirit, you would open up to us vistas of your heart. That you would help us know what you're really about. That you'd get rid of all the crap. That you'd unstop us and flood us with clean water. That we'll have a spiritual colonic. Get rid of all the doo-doo that's been impacted and crammed into our spirits. So that only the only thing that will remain, and in our minds, is the pure flow of your truth. Truth in the inward parts. Not doo-doo. Truth. 
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd move by your spirit, that you do whatever it takes to bring us to the end of ourselves so that we can begin to discover the beginnings of who you are. We have but tasted and we see that you are good. We've but tasted, we've but begun to see the beginnings of your power. We know nothing compared to what is there. So vast, so transcendent, so glorious, so free. Our God is free. Our God is liberty. Our God is full of life and light. Our God is a joyful God. Our God is a singing God. Our God is a dancing God. Our God is a reigning God. Our God has no problems. Our God is not threatened. Our God sits in the heavens and laughs until unto derision the things of men. For the Lord in this hour shall rise and shake mightily the heavens and the earth. All things that can be shaken shall be shaken. In this hour, says the Lord, I will establish a work that is truly my work. It is not a work begun here. It is begun in the heart of the Father. It is begun in, to, in the realm of eternity that is now made manifest here. Even now, my people, if you would be but willing, if you would be but willing to lay aside the things of men, I will reveal to you things of God within. There's a treasure hidden within you. Will you dig it out? There is a revelation of my son. Will you have it? Or will you settle for mere club mentality so that you have this title and that title and that acknowledgement and people know your name? Is that important to you? Is that important to you that people know your name? Or is it important that I know who you are? Many will stand before me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, we were on TV. We had many people know about you because of us. Lord, we sent out much literature. We witnessed. We talked. And I'll say, but I didn't know you. You talked about me, but you spoke of one whom you did not know. You did not let me in, have entrance into your being. You did not let me work within you the pleasure of my will. I consider that iniquity. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would rid us of all iniquity. That you would help us, Lord, to judge ourselves that we be not judged. So that on that day, we will stand before you and hear you say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. So that we will not have anything pulled out of hidden darkness. For you said the things that are spoken in secret shall be proclaimed openly. The things that are hidden will be made known. Both good and evil. Lord Jesus, you said, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to what he has done. And I know that only those things born in the councils of the Trinity are those things that will be acknowledged as worthy of favor and your praise. On that day, I pray for this people. That is why I am here tonight to prepare them for that day when they will individually stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I pray that from this encounter tonight, they will be more fit and more ready to stand and give an account without fear. You spoke about being able to go before you boldly, without shame, glorious entrance, a glorious entrance into the kingdom. So go on and burn the hell out of us so that there is none to get rid of then. Deal with us, Lord. Bring us to a place of reality. Truth in the inward parts. No other stuff. I thank you, glorious God of heaven. Glorious God of heaven and earth. Glorious God of heaven and earth. Filled with joy. Filled with mirth. How we love you. How we adore you, God. You, the only door to eternal life, to eternal things. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, to you we sing. Holy One, Son of God. Holy One, upon this sod we seek your face. We need your grace. Lord, by your Spirit, Lord, help us seek your face. Doramayeko. Hallelujah, Lord, I praise your name. Oh, we praise your name. Y'all praise him with me? Oh, we praise your name, Lord. Lord, hallelujah. What key am I in? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, I don't hear you singing, guys. Help me. Hallelujah, hallelujah.